American Muslims. We are doctors, engineers, we are God-fearing people. We reach to our neighbor, we are in school. We don't care whether they're Muslims or non-Muslims. You're the best. We are rooted here in this country. Our bodies will be buried in this ground here. I have a vested interest. I am passionate about Islam in America. You have different, different voices that all contribute to this beautiful diversity of Muslims. With all your defaults and all our mistakes, we are still the best group of people that ever came to America. Allah does not change your situation unless you change yourself. You start, Allah finishes. I'm trying to simplify the message. If you are having a great life and things are coming to you very easily and you're having success, success in every single aspect of life, Allah will not change if you are thankful to him, Allah will continue to give you. That's, that's a deal. If you are in a good situation and you are thankful to Allah, Allah will continue to keep you in a good situation until the day you die. The other way, if you really don't like the situation you're in, and for some reason you hate your life and your job, and you're not having a good life, and you're being tortured by problems. If you would like to change it, come close to Allah, Allah will change, will make it change. So it's from positive to negative, from negative to positive. This message has to be understood individually, not as an ummah. I am not trying to unite the ummah of Muhammad. One brother opens a restaurant and they tell him, what's your objective of opening a restaurant? He says, to unite the ummah. لا يا أخي. Just take care of your business, sell us halal, clean your food, and we're happy. We will eventually come together with you or without you. Stop uniting the ummah. Unite yourself. Make sure you're going to paradise. And if you are a superman, take somebody with you. You are not responsible for every Muslim and the whole ummah by yourself. You are responsible for you. This ayah is for me and you individuals. I know time will run out before I have to say what I want to say. So I'm going to jump all the way to the conclusion and go back. If you are lacking success in life, or you want your success to continue, there has to be a step one. There has to be a step one to success. That is salah on time. Don't fool yourself. Salah on time is step one. Not the only step, but it is definitely step one for individuals. For the Ummah of Muhammad, for your community, showing up on Friday Salah, which is Jama'ah, on time, the whole community will benefit from it. Not as the Imam say, Assalamu Alaikum, and then you showed up before Assalamu Alaikum. Respect Friday Salah. Tell your Imam to cut down Friday Salah to Friday Khutbah and prayer to five minutes. The whole program, five minutes, if he can guarantee people show up on time for these five minutes. We twisted our deen and now we're saying, oh my God, did you see what happened to us? What happened? Trump declared that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Yeah, Sheikh, all he did is move the capital of Israel from occupied Tel Aviv to occupied Jerusalem. They've been occupied for 60 years. And now you're mad because they... Take it easy. 
What is the condition of the Muslim Ummah right now that we need to change? I see that 1.8 billion Muslims at least once a day. Let me repeat. 1.8 billion Muslims at least once a day for the past 60 years saying, Ya Allah, give us victory. And the more days come, the more we are humiliated. Allah is not answering our call. Allahumma sunna ala man adana. Nothing. May Allah give us victory over those who are torturing us. Nothing. Ya Allah, give us Palestine five times a day. It's not working. And then comes the big day. The khutbah salah during hajj. Almost three million Muslims for the past 60 years. Ya Allah, give us back Palestine. It's not coming back. And then the second hajj, they come after that. Ya Allah, give us Palestine. The khatib say, we're not getting it back. It seems like the more we make prayer to Allah, the more land the Palestinians are losing. What's going on? Allah made it a sunnah. In politics, when you're talking to your children, you reach a conclusion and you tell him, listen, son, history will always repeat itself. Do you agree? Raise your hand. Don't you say that all the time? History will repeat itself. Ya yeah, Sheikh, did you know what Allah says in the Quran regarding history repeats itself? Sunnah Allah. Allati qad khalat. Walan tajida li sunnati Allahi tabdila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the beginning of time until the end of time, has put rules for success and rules for failure. And they will never change. That's what history repeats itself. The laws and regulations for happiness to keep to come never changed. The laws and happiness, the laws for humiliation, torture, death by enemy, weakness, has not changed. Whatever we're doing right now, Muslims before us have done, and they lost. To explain it to your children, focus on the Battle of Uhud. Battle of Uhud. The Muslims did not win. Are you serious? Can you imagine the Muslims winning in the Battle of Uhud? It would have been a disaster for all the armies until the Day of Judgment. It would have been a disaster. Let me rephrase what Allah says in the Quran to understand. Are you serious? You disobey Rasulullah and you think you're going to win? You disobey Rasulullah, you're making fun of the sunnah of Rasulullah, and you think you're going to win? In among the 1.8 billion Muslims, there are a bunch of losers, wicked, evil losers. Among us, they say, Quran is sufficient, I don't want any sunnah. What they call themselves? Quranis. And they're among you, and you think you're going to win if you go to battle? Do you know the worst thing can happen? The way Allah torture us to come back to him? He let you win a battle. Alhamdulillah, that we don't win battles. Because if we win a battle by disobeying Rasulullah, we're going to think we are close to Allah and continue doing what we're doing. Don't focus today on Palestine. Leave Palestine alone. Allah send them Palestinians that will take care of you and them. Focus on Burma. Burma. Sheikh, let me, here's Burma on the map. And here's Burma in real life. 1.8 billion Muslims are humiliated by Burma. It's like you're running away from your house because it was occupied by a roach. Doesn't that make you a chicken? Burma is humiliating us. When you go home, Google country, Muslim countries' embassies in Burma. They all have embassies. Nobody opens his mouth. Burma is humiliating you. Burma is doing that to Muslims, and they settle for no less but burning a Muslim alive. 
that doesn't tell you how wicked Burma is. It tells you how weak we are. Regarding the ayah, Allah will not change your situation until you change yourself from good to bad and from bad to good. Somebody asked me, what's going on in Syria? What's going on in Syria, Sheikh? I evaluate who's asking me to give him an answer of his size. Sometimes I talk, I explain for an hour. Sometimes I don't have an hour. And who am I talking to? I tell him at one time, I was invited to a brother from Pakistan's house. He asked me about Syria. I'm answering him this way. I was at a Pakistani house having lunch at his house with a brother from Ethiopia. Only Islam will bring a Pakistani, Syrian, and Ethiopian together, Akhi. And biryani too. And I told them while we were sitting down, I was explaining to them, Allah has his curse on those who bribe and those who receive the bribe and those who become the middleman between bribers. That, no exception. And I was telling them how corrupted Syria was for 50 years under the ruling of Butcher Assad. He asked me how Syria is. I told him, Ya Sheikh, it's the most corrupted country in the world. When I said that, the, the Pakistani brother thought I stabbed him with a knife. He said, no, Pakistan is more corrupted than Syria. I'm like, no, we are number one in something. The Ethiopian guy almost lost his hair. He said, Ethiopia is more corrupt than Syria and Pakistan. It got so serious, ya Latif. I thought, I wish we were in a separate land before the brother kick us out of his house. So we started proving to each other which one is more corrupted than the other countries, Syria, Pakistan, or Ethiopia. Allah is my witness, finally I won. He was telling me, you cannot release your bags at the airport if you don't bribe the guy who's bringing you the bags. Or you probably lose it. The brother from Ethiopia, he said, you will miss your plane if you don't bribe the taxi for the I told him, Ya in Syria, if you want to bribe somebody, you have to bribe three people to take you to the person that you need to properly bribe. They said, we will you win. Takbir. If you are from any Muslim country, any Muslim country, you ladies, sisters, and the brothers come from. Here's what happened to your ulama. Here's what your ulama are doing. 100 of the highest scholars in our religion, worldwide. Ya Latif, this is worldwide scholars of Muslims from every single country. Muslim country came to decide what to do in Syria. And they declared, all of them, it's on YouTube, they declared that jihad is incumbent in Syria. Wajib, wajib. Not like cheerleading. No, no, you have to be doing jihad. Not a single one of them went to Syria to do jihad. These are the teachers of your children. These are the people you're taking your knowledge from. And then after the meeting, each one went to TV and continued his program to teach us that if you move dirt from the street, you go to paradise. If you smile at your brother, Allah reward you. While the blood is reaching the ankles. Who are you getting learning from? Why are you going to change your situation? Know who you're learning your deen from. Ibn al-Qayyim. Visiting Iraq, the scholar. And the people ask scholars, how, how, how do we change our situation? Palestine is gone. Can we, do you think, when, when are we going to get Palestine? That was the first time he was asked, when do we get Palestine back? 
فلسطين اخي is not just a real estate فلسطين is your dignity and honor and Muslims he say I have never been asked this question I'll ask you tomorrow so he comes back he goes I don't think we're going to get it in 10 years they say Sheikh when he goes, Wallahi, but I know for sure that we are not getting Palestine in 10 years then he comes back he goes and then I find out we're not getting it in 20 years. And we're not even getting it in 30. For if, he stopped at 30. He said, for if we're going to ever get Palestine, you better start teaching your children proper Islam. Not change yourself. He even went further than that. Palestine is not a joke. He said, 30 years. If you want to get there after 30 years, you better start now teaching your children proper Islam so they will grow up better Muslims, not half and half. You and I belong to our milk, not to our victory. Wallahi, they took his advice. From these schools graduated Salah al-Din Ayyubi. It took 50 years for a generation of Muslims my brothers in Islam, wallahi, 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 you're not going to smell Palestine soon. With the way we treat each other, with the way we allow people to come in and we call them our brother, Muslim brothers, the way you think there is something in Islam called Sunni Muslim, who, who is Sunni Muslim? Do you know when you say I'm red, you recognize black and white and blue? You're a Muslim, Ya Sheikh. You are only a Muslim and no one else can be recognized except you are a Muslim. Quran, Sunnah, Sahaba, Tabi'een, and finish. For if the Ummah of Muhammad go to hell, at least you as an individual go to paradise. One of the ulama said, the only time a Muslim should ask, a Muslim jama'ah should ask Allah for victory, the only time the Muslim jama'ah ask Allah for victory is when they are lining up across from their enemy. That means they have done everything they have to do, and now they're saying, Ya Allah, the last step, we have done everything, Ya Allah. We're asking you for victory. They came to Imam Hassan al-Basri, Ya Sheikh, when I go over my time, I don't. They came to Imam Hassan al-Basri while he was lecturing. And a guy walked in, he said, Ya Imam, my wife is not bearing children. Yeah, always blame the wife. My wife is not having children. I'm not having children. How? La yughayrullahu ma biqawmin hatta yughayru ma bianfusihim. Even that? He tell him, oh, you want to have more children? He said, yes. Wallahi, I thought he's going to tell him, go, go eat apples from Burma or, or Colombia or drink Ethiopian coffee. He told him, you need to make a istighfar. Are you serious? In, in, in medical terms, really, the doctor will laugh at you. If you tell him, if you tell, doctors don't take this. So he said, you need to make a istighfar. He left. Another guy comes. He says, Ya Sheikh, it hasn't rained on my land. I'm losing all my veg vegetables and fruits that I, bl I planted. He says, your, your, your land is dying from the lack of water? He goes, yes. He says, the best thing you do is make istighfar. And another guy say, the blessings that I receive in my house, like a good wife, a good son, an income, dignity, and pride, I'm losing it. He goes, you're losing it? He says, yeah. What can I do? He said, make istighfar. All four, five, six of them left. And the people sitting say, Ya Imam, what kind of medicine is this? Tylenol for everything? One prescription for all these diseases? He said, it's not from me, ya akhi. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلُ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا ويمددكم بأموال وبنين 
ويجعل لكم جنات ويجعل لكم أنهارا I only told them what Allah said Make istighfar You know what make istighfar mean? Step one Ya Allah I, made, I did something wrong Ya Sheikh istighfar is not astaghfirullah only There are many things before that When you say astaghfirullah Allah loves you when you make istighfar, you mean, you're telling Allah, Ya Allah, I disobeyed you, I did something wrong. One. Two. Ya Allah, where do I go? I cannot go anywhere except back to you. Therefore, Ya Allah, I promise, I promise, Ya Allah, you and myself, number three, to stop. Number four, Ya Allah, forgive me. Not forgive me, and you keep doing this. Ya Sheikh. You know, somebody drinking whiskey and going, Astaghfirullah al Azim. Astaghfirullah al Azim. Astaghfirullah al Azim. He said, I told my people what Allah, to what Allah told Nuh to tell his people. Make istighfar. Come back to Allah. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the blessings to your houses and your businesses and your families. Make istighfar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you children, lucky children, good children, strong children, educated children. They will ace SAT children. Make istighfar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send you rivers, rivers of good. A river here means plenty and Allah knows best. Rivers, continuous blessing. My brothers, sisters in Islam, step one to success, not two, not three. Step one to success, respect your salah. Respect your salah. Here's your schedule. Five prayers a day and do whatever you want in between. Not do whatever you, you want in between and then squeeze salah with قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ إِنَّ أَعْطَيَنَا كَوْثَرْ during a commercial on TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. American Muslims. We are doctors, engineers. We are God-fearing people. We reach to our neighbor. We are in school. We don't care whether they're Muslims or non-Muslims. You're the best. We are rooted here in this country. Our bodies will re be buried in this ground here. I have a vested interest. I am passionate about Islam and America. You have different, different voices that all contribute to this beautiful diversity of Muslims. With all your defaults and all our mistakes, we are still the best group of people that ever came to America.